Okay, we're going to take a look at the edate function. It's actually a handy little function that I didn't even know existed until I ran across just a little bit ago. And now I'm going to try to remember to use it in my spreadsheets. What it does is it takes a starting date and it adds or subtracts a certain number of months to it. And the magic that happens is that it knows how many days are in each month, right? So you're thinking, well, I can just add 30 or 60 or 90, but but this will get you to June 17th or July 17th, et cetera, which is a little bit easier to do if you use this function. So it's pretty simple. Here I just added 13 months and you can see it moved it forward from May 17th to June 17th. And then obviously it moved here too. One thing to keep in mind with this function is that it truncates the number of months that you're specifying to move it forward or back. So if you were to say 13.7, for example, it cuts that off and treats it like 13. Why you'd ever want to do that instead of just rounding, I don't know, but that's the way that Google Sheets treats it. And you can also go backwards with it. So here I'm starting on May 17th and I'm going back two months. And as I touched on earlier, one of the things that makes this valuable is that it knows the number of days in a month. So if you want to advance May 17th by three months, you can do it just by way basically saying, function. look at this date and go forward three months. Or you could look at a calendar and try to figure out the number of days in a month. Pretty sure the first one's easier. And so as a little test, I picked a leap year. And this again shows how this function is useful. So what I did was I added one month to February in one year that had a leap year and then one that didn't. And it shows that this function is smart enough that it bumped me to the 28th day of the next month in each time. But if you just do it adding 28 days, it doesn't know that you want the same month the next month. So on one of these, it doesn't work right. So that's just a basic illustration of eDate. Typically when you're going to be using it, it's going to be in a more complex spreadsheet, but I think it's easier just to show you how it works at a low level. So one thing to really pay attention to here is that you have quotes around the dates. If I take these quotes out, the function is going to blow up. What it tried to do here was take five divided by 17 divided by 2017. And obviously that's not what you wanted to have happen. So when you're in Google sheets, there's a couple ways to deal with dates. One of them is to put in quotes. Another one is to put the date in another cell and then reference it over. So this is what I mean by that. So in that cell, you don't have to have quotes on that. See so if you put in the reference to cell, E6, that works as well. And then there's a third way to input the date too. So we talked about the quotes. You can do a cell reference or you can wrap a date function inside of this function. It would be something like that. And then it would want the year, the month and the day. So that should pretty much cover the basic functionality, the eDate function. In and of itself, it's not that complicated, but you usually want to use it in a bigger scenario to save yourself time and really to be more accurate over time.